Pittsburgh Steelers fans, welcome to another Call Sheet Breakdown. This is Kevin Smith, and it's got a great topic for you today. Today, we're going to discuss whether or not Zach Frazier or Jackson Powers Johnson, the consensus two best centers in this draft, which one's a better fit for the Steelers? Zach Frazier, kind of the local boy out of the University of West Virginia. You can see all his accolades on the screen there, and all, a two-time All-American, a three-time team captain, a really physical player who a lot of locals really love for the Steelers. Jackson Powers Johnson, the Remington Trophy winner this past year, is the best center in America, consensus All-American, probably going to be a first-round pick. Which one of these guys will fit better in new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith's scheme in Pittsburgh? All right, let's go to the film and take a look. Zach Frazier's up first. And what you can see in this first series of clips, all from West Virginia's game against Penn State this past year, is how well he gets off the ball, how well he uses his hands, his leg drive, his tenacity. I mean, this is a guy who finishes just about every play with his hands on somebody. We'll go back and we'll, we'll play each one of these again. Right on this one, watch as he climbs to the second level to block the linebacker. Excellent job there. And on this one right here, you see him focused in the circle. The tenacity of, of him staying after the block. You'll see him kind of get, get uh, stood up a little bit at the line of scrimmage, but he keeps his legs driving. And then he winds up just throwing his back towards the, the goal line, his running back. Just again, man, a guy who stays after the block on every single play. And I love this rep here on the goal line as he'll stay square. Such a huge part of playing offensive line is being able to stay square, not turn your shoulders to give up run-throughs. And how he manages here to climb to the second level and get a piece of one, two, three Penn State defenders on that play. Zach Frazier is a tenacious blocker who, again, almost always finishes with his hands on a defender. I love in these next two clips how you really see the leg drive and the finish, right? Play to the whistle. These are from the game, uh, the last season's game against Pitt. Frazier was awesome in this game. He must have had about a dozen pancake blocks. But again, man, watch the finish to the whistle. Here he is at center, blocking to his left, driving that slanting defensive tackle into the ground, finishing with his hands on. Again, this is something you see all the time, right? Hands on a defender as the play ends. And in this next one, something similar here. Watch him as he'll just move this defensive lineman till the whistle. Again, in both of these plays, Zach Frazier is a guy who will be relentless, to the echo of the whistle. That's what you hear a lot of offensive line coaches. You know, you block to the echo of the whistle. And that is something that Zach Frazier takes literally. Frazier's not just a mauler between the tackles. He can get out in space and move. Watch him. I love this block, man. He's going he's gonna to initially reach to his right to, to get a chip here on the two-eye technique. And then he will climb to the linebacker. Uh, this backer right here, and it doesn't go well for the linebacker, man. Watch Frazier move his feet and finish the block. Chip, climb, and boy, that linebacker's on a ride, man. Frazier takes him about 10 yards down the field. He gets his hands. He's a wrestler, man. Once he gets his hands on you, this is a guy who was a state champion wrestler. If he gets his hands on you, you are in trouble as a defender. If we go back to the Penn State game, here's another example. This time, Frazier moving to his left. Uh, these are these are kind of wide zone plays, which we expect to see a lot of in Pittsburgh under Arthur Smith. Smith loves the wide zone. And again, Frazier doing a nice job getting out of space, in space. This isn't a pancake block, but look how well he uses his body to cut off the safety and just create a, a seam for the back to pick up a few extra yards. Frazier, Frazier obviously has weaknesses in his game. Every player does. There's hard to find, it's hard to find a lot of them. I would say the biggest weakness he has is that he can get off balance a little bit. Sometimes his weight's too far forward. Watch him here as he tries to pick up the linebacker on the blitz. Weight too far forward. He winds up on his on his hands there. Again, man, you just see him sort of lunge right here. He, he's just getting off balance with a little bit of a lunge. Too much weight forward. And athletic linebackers will obviously make you miss if you do that. But this is not exactly a recurring problem with Frazier's game. He'll just have to learn to keep his feet underneath him a little bit better. If the Steelers, though, man, want a center who is athletic enough to be able to play all over the field, physical enough to be able to dominate 
defenders at both the first and second level and just tenacious. Again, if you watch this play, you can see his wrestling background. This looks like a wrestling takedown with the hands inside and not a hold. I mean, this is a guy who I think Steeler fans have been clamoring for a physical center and a leader, three-time team captain at the position for the last few years, at least since Marquise Pouncey retired, and Zach Frazier would be a great option in that regard. So, too, would Jackson Powers Johnson, the, the Remington winner and the first-team All-American at center from this past season. He is a similar player to Frazier, a little bit bigger, maybe not quite as nasty in the trenches, but really athletic. You'll see in some of these clips how well he moves his feet. You can see him at center here reaching left on this option play. And you'll see him be able to get out in space, watch him abuse the linebacker there. And then on this one, he'll double and chip up to the linebacker here. We'll run all these again, right? You see with, with Jackson Powers Johnson, just uh, el elite athleticism for a guy his size. I mean, I love this clip right here just because it shows you his ability to climb and finish. One, again, like Frazier, he gets his hands on you, and you're going for a ride. You see him take the linebacker all the way out of the picture there. And in this one, this is a really nice example. You see the big 58 right here of him double team on the down tackle and then work up to the linebacker and then be able to control the backer when he gets there. This is the classic zone game. He'll be asked to do a lot of this in Pittsburgh. I mentioned his athleticism in space. He abuses guys when he gets up to the second level, plain and simple. These are mismatches, and I understand it's pretty much always a mismatch when you get a lineman on a linebacker, but just to be able to get into the proper position to make the block, and then once he's there, obviously, you can see the finish. You're not getting off of him. you know, Like Frazier, once the hands are on, once he's locked in, the, you know, the match is over. Uh, but his feet are so good that they allow him to get in position. It's not easy to get onto a linebacker like that in space. Backers generally can make you miss. But uh, Powers Johnson has such good feet that he rarely misses at that second level. Like Frazier, Powers Johnson plays with, well, as his name suggests, power. This is a great example. My goodness. Watch this. This is actually almost dangerous. Watch as he chips this three-technique tackle before climbing up to the linebacker. He's going to shuffle laterally and then just put his shoulder into him and literally declete the down lineman. My goodness gracious, man. Decleating him, knocking him literally off his feet. And I say it's almost dangerous because he sends him airborne into the legs of his offensive tackle. But the power evident right there in just this shuffle shoulder and now climb up to the linebacker is really impressive. Oregon was a big screen team. And when you have a center who can get out and do things like this, it's really easy to understand why. When you've got, got a guy who plays on the perimeter with that kind of agility and nastiness, it gets it, it makes it a lot easier to be able to, to put the ball out in space. You know, the Steelers are going to run a lot of outside zone. They're going to probably run some a good amount of perimeter screens under Arthur Smith. And having a guy like this who can block in space with that ability would be a real benefit to that offense. Speaking of that outside zone game in Pittsburgh, I love this rep. Watch Powers Johnson here on the center. He's got a reach block to his left to block that nose. But what makes this so challenging is that the nose is on a slant. He's slanting to his right. And Oregon's running sweep here to the left. So you've got the nose slanting in the direction to which the sweep is going. And this is going to be a really hard block for Powers Johnson. But watch how deftly he slides, wins outside position, and then just deposits the, the nose onto the turf. I mean, again, that this block's a lot harder than it looks. you got to get to your left with quickness. And then you have to have the power to turn that defender once you get there. One more time. Turns him tosses him back on the edge. Really excellent technique work there and power from Powers Johnson. If I had to find a weakness in his game, I mean, I guess it would be that sometimes he plays too high. Watch him here as you're going to see him sort of give up his chest and get jolted back on this shot here from the nose. I mean, this is not a huge problem, but you you know you can't give your chest up in the NFL, right? That's that doesn't hurt the play again. It's another perimeter screen, but in pass protection, he's going to have to make sure that he stays with a low base, wins leverage, keeps his hand inside, or those big NFL defensive tackles will drive him into the backfield. 
All right, so who do we like? Who's the better call for the Steelers? Who's the better fit? I really believe, I'm going to hedge here a little bit and say that they're both great fits. The Steelers would be happy with both of them. I think, honestly, though, Frazier might be the better choice because I don't know if the Steelers are going to want to spend a first-round pick on their center. To get Powers Johnson, they're going to have to spend a first-round pick. The only concern I have about Powers Johnson is this. He only started for one year at Oregon. He did it for one year. He was fabulous. He was the best center in the country for that one year. But again, that's just one year, whereas Frazier's been doing it for three years at West Virginia. And you can probably get Frazier in the second round. You might have to move up, but if the Steelers are, are get a guy in the first that they like, an, an offensive tackle per se, and they want to be aggressive to go up and get Frazier, they can do that. So at the end of the day, while I think both of these guys would be phenomenal fits in Pittsburgh, I'd love to have both of them. I think the Steelers are probably more inclined to see Frazier as the better value in this situation. And that will make a lot of Steelers fans happy because he's a local boy. Shannon White, if you're listening, I know you would be thrilled. All right, man, that's a call sheet breakdown focusing on the center position. And we'll be back taking a look at the defense shortly. All right, Steelers fans. Good luck as we hit free agency. I hope we get what we want. Take care, everybody.